I think we like to fool ourselves that we're rational beings. Uh, and so we need to pay more attention to the irrational parts of ourselves and the deeper parts of ourselves. The deeper part of being a human being is about love and loneliness and death. Uh, you, know, you don't understand being alive unless you have some awareness of death. The face series came about because of the death of my mother. She died a couple of years earlier and it was a way of paying homage to her in a very oblique way. She was a very rational person who didn't believe in anything except fairies. <laughs> and um, I grew up in this wonderful sort of world of fairy tales and when, when I was walking with my mother she would point to the tree roots and, and they would be conjured up into fairy cities. Um, so my, I got that magic and that uh, wonder from my mother and so it was a way of giving that back to her. Uh, but at the same time, I wanted, didn't want to do it in terms of, oh, the young, fey-looking sprites. You know, I, I wanted my fairies to be grounded in solid-looking women who've had a past and, you know, and aren't going to take, you know, they aren't going to take shit from anyone. I've n never been interested in traditional ideas of beauty. I mean, you know, if you want to see that, my like, God, you know, pick up any magazine, turn on the TV, it's like bombarded with it. But that's not real people. We're sort of lumpy and, you know, we don't quite, we never conform to that. So I, I think it's, for me, it's artists' role to celebrate real people, you know, in, in that sense. And even though these are fantastical paintings, you know, uh, my models are real people and I want I, I sort of ground my fantasies in reality, and my reality is, and what I'm interested in is, you know, humanity walks and all, and the beauty of that. Sycorax was the mother of Caliban in uh, Shakespeare's play, The Tempest. We don't see Sycorax, she's, um, she's dead when the play commences. And she's dismissed as this sort of evil witch who, um, uh, whose lover was the demon Setebos and uh, Caliban's father, and this awful creature. And yet, somehow, I think the whole play hinges on her existence. It was her island before Prospero turns up, um, and which is why in my painting, um, there she is with her lover, whether it's her son or father or son, we don't know, but um, they're intertwined on what at first glance is the ground, but on closer inspection is actually water. So they become the island. I feel almost Sycorax is the island upon which um, Prospero's play happens. Death and the Maiden was, um, it became almost a, a cult thing. It began in the Middle Ages. Uh, there appeared lots of woodcuts and engravings of the maiden and a skeleton, usually standing opposite each other. Um, what I've done is twisted it a bit because there's no skeleton in mind. Death is, uh, I've gone back to a, a figure that I've used in the past, which is Cerberus, the three-headed dog. Uh, here, Cerberus is her three-headed dog lover. And the complexity for me is that she is far more intertwined they're lovers, they're not, so life and death are, are really one. The process, it comes from lots of different directions at once, so I'm drawing things, I'm looking through books, I, just, I may sometimes make lists of words, uh, meanwhile I'm photographing models and, and that's a whole torturous process in itself, and then eventually I get possibilities, so I then start painting them up, uh, quite a lot of them fall by the wayside um, and it's sort of very haphazard thing eventually <laughs> seems to come together. For instance in Sycorax originally it was my models who were uh, in relationship, they were lying together and um, she was leaning her head against his. Uh, I spent about a day painting his head and it was really starting to come together. Then I came in the next morning and I looked at it and I go, mm, no, no, he's got to go. I was originally going to put the, and the animal part of the painting was going to be behind them. There was going to be these giant creatures sort of around them. And, and very quickly then somehow the, his head turned into the lizard's head. Uh, and it was ambiguous because was this a, a, a lizard emerging out of almost the, the cave between their bodies? Or, 
you know, anyway, I, and then I knew I had it. By this time, I realized I was really staging things much more. And I wanted my models to have a, a primitive, slow, otherworldly feel. I wanted them to be from the dark recesses. This is really come in to come from the dark parts of Not dark in a negative way, but in a deep part of our, 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 our unconscious. So how to make them look, look primitive and how to transform them. So I started by uh, covering them in uh, white clay, just the slip, you know, white slip. And then I, I wanted to suggest almost the roots, the beginnings of clothing, the beginnings of decoration. And that's where the rope came in, and tying the reeds to um, her hands. And some people have suggested bondage, but which I'm okay with. I don't mind that in a way, because I think there is a fetishistic element to this. So, But that was not the intention. That was not the starting point at all. I, I, I believe in stories. I mean, I, I love non-narrative painting, but that's just not the way my mind works. I, I think we only... I think knowledge is about stories. I think the only, you know, you look at a chair, if you don't know the story of how you, of what a chair is, you don't even recognize it. So stories are everything. The stories can be handled obliquely. I mean, in, in my series, The Weather Reports, they're just these cloud formations, but when you look at them, you can see they're actually much more. And it suggests something awful has happened before and something awful is happening within the clouds. So there is the narrative, even though it's compressed down to this one tiny fragment. What am I trying to say with these works is, is not something I can answer. Uh, what I'm doing is exploring. I don't think it's the artist's job to actually give answers. I think it's the artist's job to uh, reframe the questions. I, think, I really think that's what our job is to do. So that you can sort of maybe get the glimpse of those same, the old, the eternal questions from maybe a slightly different angle. Mm. That's what I would hope. That's the best I can do.